What's going on guys, it is Caleb and today we're going to finish off another video in Introduction to Objects 2. Last or in the previous video we did Are You Down with the Object Orient Programming or also known as OOP which was an introduction to classes and prototype. Today we're going to be doing the Inheriting of Fortune, Inheritance of an Object Oriented Programming. So let's go ahead and get started. And if you're not already watching in 720p, make sure to go ahead and watch in 720p. Um, I'm really liking this new editor, so hopefully you guys will enjoy the new editor as well. Uh, I haven't gotten any feedback on it yet, but I think it's a lot better than uh, the QuickTime. It's uh, called uh, let me see, it's called ScreenFlow, so it's a lot better. I can uh, manipulate the windows as I like, as you can see in a second. I'll uh, enlarge the one on the left and I'll enlarge the one on the right, depending on what I'm talking about. But with all that being said, if you're not already subscribed, make sure to subscribe. Without further more ado, let's get started. And let's reset our code in our editor. And let's go ahead and begin reading. It's all in the genes. In object oriented programming, inheritance allows one class to see and use methods and properties of another class. You can think of it as a child being able to use his or her parents' money and because the child inherits the money. We will learn more about inheritance as we continue through this lesson, but for now, let's just refresh our memories about how classes and objects work. The instructions are, create a class named animal with two properties, name and number of legs. The animal constructor should have two arguments, whose values are assigned to name and num legs. Next, change the prototype of the animal and add a method say name that prints to the console hi, my name is, and plus the name, where name is the value of the name. Finally, we have provided the last two lines to test your constructor and say name method. Don't change these. So let's go ahead and go over to our editor and begin to create our animal function, or object. So let's go ahead and say function, and we say animal, and we're going to pass in his name and his number of legs. Not only are we doing that, we're going to do the open curly braces, and we're going to say this dot name equals name, this dot number of legs, or num of legs, equals num legs. Now that we have our object set up, let's go ahead and create a new uh, f uh, prototype of our animal function. So animal dot prototype dot say name. Now if you guys recall, this will um, inherit the say name um, function throughout all of the animal objects. So um, function, uh, open curly braces, nothing's going to be passed through these. Make sure to add our semicolon. Now that we have this, we're just going to say console.log hi, uh, my name is plus this dot name and that will refer to our object that calls this. Now that looks pretty good. Now hopefully if we go ahead and uh, save and submit our code we get the green light. Hi my name is Captain Cook. So we got it correct. Let's go on to the next lesson. Marching penguins and let's reset before we get started. Let's say we're dealing with a lot of penguins. It sure would be nice to create a penguin class so that perhaps later we can give it some methods unique to a penguin and not confuse it with the animal class. The instructions are, create a new penguin class constructor. A penguin is an animal so it should also have the name and number of legs property as well as the say name method that prints the same thing as animals say name method. We're not done with animals yet. so. We still have included the animal's constructor and its say name method. The last two lines test your penguin code. So once again, if we just go over here and look for our penguin, all we have to say really is var penguin equals new animal. Or not even that, we can just say var penguin equals animal. And what this will do, this will say that whenever we create a penguin, 
we're going it's also going to use the same constructor as the animal and we go ahead and save and submit our code you can see we get a penguin this time and we can also see hi my name is Captain Cook so we've got the green light let's go ahead and start the next lesson I'm going to go ahead and reset this DRY penguins creating a brand new penguin, penguin was nice but we did end up reusing a lot of the same code as the animal class this goes against the DRI principle of programming. Don't repeat yourself. And really, guys, we didn't do this because we said that the um, penguin was equal to an animal, which really, I guess they wanted us to create a whole new penguin function, which in a way, we did do that, but we didn't do it the way that they specified. So, um, anyways, if we go back, you can see that we just said penguin, and they wanted us to have another actual function that said uh, animal or not animal, it would actually said um, penguin, so function penguin, and then passing in all this other stuff, and then creating all this stuff again, which would be a lot of really tedious, it was all that, and comparing it to one line was a lot simpler. So let's go back up to number three. So um, inheritance can help us here. A penguin is an animal, so they should have all the same properties and methods as an animal. Whenever this x is a y relationship exists, there's a good chance that we should be using inheritance. Remember, inheritance lets us see and use properties and methods from another class. To say that the penguin inherits from the animal, we need to set the penguin's prototype to be animal. Create a new penguin class. The penguin constructor can be more unique in than the generic animal one because all penguins have two legs. Your constructor should only take a name parameter and within the constructor itself set this dot num legs to two. Set the penguin's class prototype to a new instance of animal by adding this line after you make the constructor. Penguin dot prototype equals new animal. And that pretty much is just saying that it's creating a new animal object. This means that the penguin inherits the properties and methods from the animal as well. So, if we go here and define our new penguin class, all we have to say is just function penguin, and we're passing in just a name. Not only are we doing that, but we're saying this dot number of legs, or num legs, equals two, because penguins only have two legs, and this dot name equals equals the name that we're going to pass in. Now that we have this, all we're going to say now is penguin dot prototype, just like it said down below, equals new animal. And that will give our penguin all of the animal's um, methods and properties. It pretty much inherits the um, the uh, say name function right here. So we could really we could say penguin dot say name, and it would print out hi my name is, and then whatever the name of the penguin is. So we save and submit. We get the green light. So away they go, and off to number four, and reset. Black and white penguin magic. Now for some black magic, and see the power of inheritance. We never define say name method for penguin, but what happens when we try to call it? Create a penguin object with the variable name penguin and any name you'd like. Then call penguin dot say name, then be amazed. So all we have to do here is just create a new penguin. And I'm gonna do this right underneath our uh, penguin dot prototype. So var penguin equals new penguin. And we just say Bob for our penguin's name. Now, if we say penguin dot say name, and we say um, pass in penguin, and I caught this right here, that should be a P. Now, if we pass in our penguin's name, actually we don't even have to pass in our penguin's name because it, say name takes no options. But um, I would say penguin dot say name. Uh, it should print out, hi, my name is Bob. And let's go ahead and try to test this. And which we do, we get, hi, my name is Bob. So we got this correct. And that, correctly, if we go back to our editor, this 
inherited the say name function which was in the animal this method right here which is within the animal it inherited that property and methods from the animal by using the penguin.prototype equals new animal so save and submit and let's go on to the next lesson on uh, number five now resetting our code penguins properties in the prototype we saw in the last exercise how penguin inherited the say name method from animal we now explore how classes can inherit properties as well. For s simplicity, we define new penguin class that doesn't inherit anything from animal. The instructions are, create an emperor class that takes a single name parameter and sets its name property to this value. Don't set a num legs property in the constructor. Similar to what we did in the previous exercise, make emperor emperor inherit the penguin by setting the prototype of emperor to the penguin. Create a new emperor object that is an instance of the emperor class with any name you'd like. Then use console.log to print the number of legs emperor has. This should have been inherited from penguin. So it sounds like we're doing a lot, but really we're just writing about four or five lines of code. So right here uh, underneath line number six, it says create your emperor class here and make it inherit from penguin. So to do that, you just go ahead and say function emperor. And once we have our emperor, we're going to pass on a name. And we just say this dot name equals name. Now that we have that, we can say emperor. dot prototype equals new penguin and that will give it that will give our emperor all of the penguin penguins properties and methods not only that um, I'm ignoring this bottom line here but if you want you can put your code down here um, what we do now is say var emperor equals new emperor and we could say whatever name we want I believe I don't think it really matters so once again we could just say we say something like emp emp there we go now we just console dot log our emperor dot num legs and we should get two because if you think about it the emperor if you think about it this way you have different kinds you have different uh, species of penguins you have emperor penguins and you have like a uh, I really don't know the other names of species of penguins but <laughs> for this demonstration just let's just say you have uh, blue penguins purple penguins and um, emperor penguins okay so all these penguins all have the same characteristics, you know. They all have some form of a penguin with them. In this case, they all have a different name, but they all have the same number of legs, you know. Um, so whenever we say emperor equals new emperor, that's refining to creating a new penguin subclass. And so whenever we call console.log emperor.number legs, we should get two as a result. So let's go ahead and try and see what we get. And as you can see, we do get two out in our console. So, way to go. Let's go and start the next lesson. And let's just reset. Up the flood, I mean prototype chain. A penguin is an animal, and an emperor penguin is a penguin. Are emperor penguins animals too? Well, of course. The prototype chain in JavaScript knows this as well. If JavaScript encounters something it can't find in the account or in the current class, uh, classes, methods, or properties, it looks up the prototype chain to see if it's defined in a class that it inherits from. This keeps going upwards until it stops all the way at the top. The mighty object.prototype, more on this later. By default, all classes inherit directly from object, unless we change the class's prototype, like we've been doing for the penguin and emperor. The instructions are, let's see how going up the prototype chain works. We define some classes and inheritance patterns 
Emperor inherits from penguin, which inherits inherits from the animal. We've also created an instance of the emperor class. Without modifying anything other than lines 22 through 24, complete the console.log statements to print the appropriate responses. Remember how the prototype chain works. If a property is not defined for a class, this class this class's prototype chain will be traveled upwards until one is found or not in a parent or higher class. So on line 22, it's it's telling us it should print waddle waddle. And if we sit here and look at it, what what penguin has waddle waddle? Well, if we look here, we we don't get waddle waddle until the emperor penguin. So something has to be equal to this emperor. So in that case, the only thing that I'm seeing that is set to the emperor is this variable down here, my emperor equals new emperor jewels. Now jewels, not only is he an emperor penguin, but he's also a penguin, so that means he has two legs. Also, he's he's also an animal. So not only does he have two legs, he also is alive. So is alive is true, he has two legs, he has a name, and he can he has a, a property that says sing, which will response or which is a string that says waddle waddle. So to be able to print out waddle waddle to the or, or waddle 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 whatever you want to call it, if you want to print that out to the um, console, we have to reference my emperor, which is a variable, and this is on line twenty. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about. So, um, if we go ahead and uh, reference my emperor dot saying, because we look up here, he is an emperor penguin, and we have a dot saying property there that prints out waddle waddle. So that would give us waddle waddle. Now, for him to print out two, all we have to say is my emperor again dot num legs. Now, he doesn't have a number of legs down here in, in the Emperor um, class. So let's go up to a higher class. Well, since the Emperor is a penguin, penguin has specified the number of legs already, and it has set it to two. So this w should print out two for the number of legs. So that's correct. Now, once again, it's saying it should print out two. So Let's go ahead and say my emperor dot is alive. Now if we look at the emperor class, we see that there's nothing here that's going to result in true. Because all we have is something that says name, which is whatever the name is that we pass through our um, object. And we also have a saying property that's just saying waddle waddle. Okay, so let's go up to a higher class. The penguin object, well, all it has defined is the number of legs, which is set to 2, and its name, which is set to whatever you pass through the object's name. Okay, well, let's go up, go up a, a class higher. Now we're in the animal, and now, as you can see, we have an is alive property, which is set to true, and this will result into true if we say my emperor dot is alive, because my emperor is really a subclass of all these classes. So if we go ahead and save and submit, we should get the green light, in which we do. And you can see we have waddle waddle 2 and true printed out to our screen. All right, guys, congratulations. You finished another section within Code Academy. Only a, f a few more, and then we finish this whole course. So I can't wait until everyone finishes this course 100%. Um, thank you guys for watching another video. If you like this video, make sure to like it up. Don't forget to leave your comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe, guys. And tell me what you think about the new um, editing. All right, guys. Until next time, it's been Caleb. And peace. Take it easy. Have a wonderful night. I know I will.